What's up guys? Welcome to this video. So today we're gonna solve a very important problem. So let's begin. 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, 1 over 16, 1 over 32. In the sequence above, each term after the first one half the previous term. If x is the tenth term of the sequence, then x satisfies which of the following inequalities? So here is the first term, here is the second term, here is the third term and x is a tenth term, okay? So first, we, we have to figure out what is x, what is the value of x. So let's analyze the sequence. So the first term is, first term here, it's one over two. The second term here is one over four. But four, we can write it this way. Uh, we can write it this way, 2 to the power of 2. And the third term here is 1 divided by 8. And 8, it's 2 to the power of 3. And the fourth term here is 1 over 16. And 1 over 16, we know that 16 is equal to 2 to the power of 4. And then the tenth term is equal to 1 divided by 2 to the power of 10 because if you see here 1 here and 1 here 2 here and the 2 is here also 3 third term 2 to the power of 3 fourth term 2 to the power of 4 so 10th term is 1 over 2 to the power of 10 okay so x is equal to 1 divided by 2 to the power of 10. So let's compute uh, quickly uh, 2 to the power of 10. So 2 to the power of 10, 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 2 to the power of uh, 3 times 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of 2. Why is this? Because uh, if we see the exponents uh, formulas, we have 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 3 is 2 to the power 3 plus 3. So it's equal to 2 to the power of 6 times 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 2 to the power of 6 plus 2. So 2 to the power of 8 times this one, 2 to the power of 2. So it's equal to 2 to the power of 10. Okay, so this way. I can compute easily the 2 to the power of 10. So now, 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8 times 8 times 4 times 4, okay? So 8 times 8 is equal to 64, okay? Times 4 times 4, so I have to do now 4 times 64, so 4 times 60 is equal to 240, and 4 times 4 is equal to 16, so 240 plus 16 is equal to 256. So 256 times 4. So 4, I know that it's 2 times 2. So 2 times 2. So 2 times uh, 256 is 512 times 2 is equal 1024. Okay, so now I made this calculation, but uh, if you want to be very powerful in the GMAT, you need to learn it by heart. 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32. 2 to the power of 6 is equal to 64. 2 to the power of 7 is equal to 128. 2 to the power of 8 is equal to 256. 2 to the power of 9 is equal to 512. And 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 1024. You have to learn it by heart if you want to be very powerful and score well in the GMAT. So, 1 divided by 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 1 divided by 1024, okay? So, this is x. x is equal to 1000 and, and now I want to know x uh, satisfies which of the following inequalities. So, I know that 1000 is less than 1024 is less than 10,000. If I have this inequality, I can say 1 divided to 10,000 is less than 1 
divided by 1024 is less than one, 1 over 1000. So when I write it this way, I have to put this one here and this one here. This is basic rules of inequalities. Okay, so now 1 over uh, 10,000 is equal to 0 0.0001 less than x less than 0 0.001 okay so x is between 0 0.0001 and 0 0.001 so the answer here is clearly d thank you for watching guys i hope you liked this video and understand it well this problem thank you for watching this video in order to help you ace the gmat i decided to offer you for free my ultimate gmat probability course you can find this course in the description of this video. Probability is one of the most important parts of the GMAT quant section. This part is very difficult and many students struggle with it. In this course, I will give you the best strategy to tackle any probability question and I will show you how to apply this strategy to more than 40 different practice questions. Once you finish this course, you'll be able to solve any probability question that encounters you in the GMAT. First, I will introduce you to combinations, arrangements, and permutations. Then, we'll solve together more than 40 GMAT questions of different level of difficulty, and I will show you step by step how to solve them in the simplest way possible. Once you master the methods I teach in this course, you'll be able, starting of tonight, to not only solve any GMAT probability problem, but also to solve them quickly, and this will help you save a lot of time during the test. Click on the link in the description to get this unique free course.